Hey there, Leslie here. And today I wanna to talk to you about a bacteria that I find really fascinating called Helicobacter pylori. It is a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of bacteria that has a good side and has a dark side. I wanna talk about natural treatments to keep it under control. And then I wanna talk about its connection to something loads of you are interested in, which is gray hair. So in past videos, I've talked about the importance of iron in preventing gray hair. And molasses, for example, has a very high uh, iron content as well as copper. And that's one of the reasons that, one of the ways that you can repigment your hair. And I've had a lot of guys write to me and say, hey, that sounds terrific. Should I be taking this? And I've said, well, Yes, it's true that low iron can lead to gray hair. However, it is more likely that women are going to have this problem because every month they lose iron in their blood in their monthly bleed. And guys, you don't have that. So it's much less likely that this is gonna be you. However, I got a really cool question from Natalie in Israel asking me about the connection between H. pylori and gray hair. And I discovered that H. pylori loves to eat iron, which means that if you are a guy and you have an H. pylori overgrowth, the H. pylori could be eating up all the iron in the blood, in the lining of your stomach. And that could be leading to a low iron state and hence gray hair. So, I mentioned earlier that it's got this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde personality. And I wanna talk a little bit about that. So there's a guy at Rutgers named Martin Blazer. He's sort of a big deal in the microbiome world. He's written a book called uh, Missing Microbes. And he talks about H. pylori as a commensal bacteria, meaning that it developed um, with us and it's been doing this ever since man was on the planet. And it has a sort, it has a good, um, it has some good properties for us. One of which is that it suppresses the gorge hormone known as ghrelin. So there are two hormones that help you decide, should you eat or are you sated? Ghrelin is the one that will make you gorge and leptin is the one that will make you lean and you don't want ghrelin. So what's good about H. pylori is that it keeps ghrelin production down. So in that respect, we might wanna keep a little bit of this H. pylori around, especially if it's been with us for millions of years. However, the bad news about it is that once it, it has an overgrowth, it actually, as I said, eats up all of our iron. It also will make absorption of vitamin B12 very difficult, which is not good because that leads to low mood, uh, that leads to depression, that leads to even catatonia in extreme cases. So we definitely don't want that. Also, H. pylori will upregulate something called zonulin. It's a chemical which opens up the tight junctions of our gut. So the whole gut has these things that basically, they're like those doors, those sliding glass doors um, that stores have and they are very tightly sealed. But when zonulin is present, they become very loose and they allow dietary and bacterial antigens to pass from the stomach, which is basically this big sac, into the bloodstream. In an extreme case, that could lead to an autoimmune attack. So you can see why you wouldn't want that. So how do you know if you've got an H. pylori overgrowth? Well, you'll probably have terrible gastric distress, you know, really bad stomach aches, bloating, gas. Um, you'll also have headaches. And finally, and the way that they test this is by doing a breath test. You'll probably have, um, you'll probably have slightly bad breath. If your partner tells you, hmm, that's not really smelling great. I don't want to kiss you. There's a reason for that. And it's probably because you have this. Again, 40 to 50% of the global population has this. Most will be asymptomatic, benefiting from the suppression of the ghrelin hormone, but some people will get an overgrowth. So how do you treat this? If you've really got a bad case, you're going to have to dip into classic allopathic medicine. I know there are a lot of people who are like, I don't wanna do that, I've gotta be all natural. Sometimes, 
And this is one of those times when you actually want to knock that colony of H. pylori bacteria, you would really want to knock it back. Otherwise your life will be a misery. So what you would take would be Pepto-Bismol, an antibiotic and an antimicrobial. That's the trifecta protocol for H. pylori. Your doctor may suggest that you do it three times. Each time is around 14 days. Um, if you want, do it once and then at the same time, take some of the natural treatments for H. pylori. These would be things like, um, like green tea. I've got my matcha here. Um, curcumin, manuka honey, sulforaphane. I don't know if you know sulforaphane, but it's in broccoli sprouts. It's also in cabbage juice. Broccoli sprouts, super, super easy to, uh, to make on your kitchen counter. Just get, they're very cheap seeds and you just basically grow them on a on a tea towel or something like that. You can even get special jars to grow them in. Um, so sulforaphane, very good. Mastic gum, also very good. So you can try all of those things. I mean, just sipping green tea on a regular basis, that's not too harsh a penalty, I think, to try and get the bacteria under control while still maintaining a small amount that might actually help you keep your ghrelin or gorge hormones down. Now, once you've actually got the colony under control, you've reduced the amount of uh, bacteria, H. pylori bacteria, what you need to do is you need to seal the gut again. So I mentioned how H. pylori will upregulate this chemical called zonulin, which uh, leads to something called leaky gut. And you can seal it again by taking, what's great about the gut mucosa, just like the mucosa here, is it heals so fast. Um, between one and two days, you can actually reseal this up. So don't be too distressed about this. And you do this by taking things like grass-fed collagen. You can add that to your smoothie, to your tea, to your coffee, to your soups. You can make little gelatin gummies. Um, and you can take bone broth. Very easy to make bone broth. I might even do a busy video to show you just how simple it is to do. And finally, there's a product that I have tried. To be honest, it had no effect on me, probably because I don't have leaky gut. However, I have friends and fellow biohackers who have used this product when they had leaky gut and they said it worked great for them. So that is called Restore. It was developed by a triple board certified doctor out of the US named Zach Bush. Uh, he's an internal medic. He's an endocrinologist and a palliative medicine specialist. So he really does know his stuff. So you can take a look at Restore as well. Once the gut is sealed up again, now we can think about replenishing those stores of iron and B12, both of which will help repigment the help with melanin production and repigment the hair bulb. So, how do you optimize that? Well, you need to make sure that you take a digestive enzyme because um, it's very likely that you won't, your gut won't, will no longer be as acidic as it was previously. So you'll need to add some hydrochloric acid and pepsin. You'll find them in health food stores. You'll often find these two together. Take that, that will help. Um, and whenever you want to increase the absorption of iron, you should always have some vitamin C. So those three things, hydrochloric acid, pepsin, vitamin C, that will help with the absorption of iron and B12. Finally, at that point, you might want to think about reintroducing some healthy probiotics or what I personally like are prebiotics and uh, you know, resistant starches like um, cooled, boiled, sorry, boiled and then cooled rice would be one uh, good prebiotic that you could try. It's also very soothing for the gut. Um, there are lots of other companies that sell prebiotics too, so you could look into those as well. But that would be, those are my ideas on things you could do to naturally treat H. pylori and hopefully reverse your gray hair. I hope that this has been an interesting video for you. It was really interesting for me to research it. I absolutely loved reading some of these, uh, some of these articles. It was just fantastic. Um, I had no idea. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And equally, if you'd like to get more tips like this, you can sign up for my newsletter also in the comments below. 
Thanks again for watching and see you next time.